Welcome to Kiwi's Beyond the Lunchbox Digital Conference. Today we have Maggie Moon, registered dietitian and author of The Mind Diet. She'll be teaching us how to boost brain health and school focus with wild blueberries and also sharing with us two delicious recipes. Maggie's session is sponsored by the Wild Blueberry Association of North America, a trade association of growers and processors sharing the wild blueberry health story with people across the globe. Stay tuned as I share a little bit more about wild blueberries in my editor's pick video before we dive into Maggie's session. Don't forget to enter to win our amazing daily giveaways and if you haven't registered yet, be sure to claim your digital swag bag filled with coupons, recipes, and digital downloads. And visit us at kiwimagonline.com where you can read our digital issue for free. Thank you, enjoy! Have you ever gone to the grocery store and picked out wild blueberries but not really been sure what the term wild actually means? Well, today we're going to find out. We're shining a spotlight on the Wild Blueberry Association of North America, which is a trade association of growers and processors sharing the wild blueberry health story across the globe. So what makes them wild? It's really interesting, actually. Wild blueberries are only found in Maine and parts of Eastern Canada, and they've never been planted. The harsh environment that they grow in is what makes them good for us. Wild blueberries contain 33% more brain healthy anthocyanins and two times the antioxidants of ordinary blueberries. Interesting fact, and this one is for the parents, research has found that wild blueberry consumption improves mood in adolescents. It also can enhance memory in adults, improve cardiovascular function, and reduce inflammation. The best part about wild blueberries is that they taste great. And you can pull a bag like this out of your freezer and add it to your morning cereal, add it to your oatmeal, put it in a smoothie, use it for baking, really anything you want. You can get fresh wild blueberries in Maine in late August, but you can always find a bag like this in the frozen fruit section of your grocery store. Just make sure that you're looking for the terms wild blueberries and that you also check the ingredient panel to make sure that it says wild blueberries as well. So, to learn more and to find a store near you, go to wildblueberries.com. Hi, I'm Maggie Moon, registered dietitian and author of The Mind Diet. It's really, really great to be with you here today. And in the next 20 minutes or so that we spend together, we're going to talk about boosting brain health and school focus, the power of food, which foods in particular, and then I'm going to close with a simple brain boosting breakfast recipe. I'm going to give you some ideas for where you can get your kids involved. If you want, you don't have to, but either way, I think you're going to love how it simplifies getting a good start to the day. And it is in fact what I do in the mornings for myself. So I just want to start actually by thanking you for investing this time in your own health and your families. And I want to thank the Wild Blueberry Association of North America for supporting this talk and allowing me to be with you today because it means a lot that you're taking the time out of your busy life, especially right now in these times when there's a lot going on more than normal. You're being asked to be superheroes to your kids and your family. And it's not easy. The world is throwing so many challenges at us. And it's, it's been adding up. I just saw this new study last week that said that in the United States, poor diet quality afflicts 46% of adults and 56% of children. That is one in two children. And that's unfortunate because it leads to this lifelong cycle of lower school performance, lost productivity in the workplace, and eventually chronic conditions like dementia that mean years of lower quality of life. But it, it doesn't have to be this way. Not for you, not for your kids, not for your family. And so I just want to say that the answer isn't huge changes. The revolutionary thing about it is that it's the little things. Starting with something as simple as a brain-boosting breakfast smoothie. How amazing is that? It's very amazing. So think about the five smooth stones that took down Goliath left alone for nature to perfect them until they were ready to serve their purpose. Water rushing over them, making them just right, 
mostly disregarded. But once their value was recognized, they were ultimately so powerful. And that is what the best foods can do for you. Banish poor health. Clear the way. Letting young minds and old minds alike thrive, which leads to good things for your kids and for you and ultimately society. And I'll tell you why starting young is so important. Setting kids up with healthy habits now helps them for life. Think about how hard it is to change your diet as an adult. If a healthy diet is all kids know, healthy is a default. It's not a challenge. Making the healthy choice the easy choice is actually one of my favorite mantras. Because who wants life to be hard? Especially for their kids. And that's what the healthy default is all about. And it's all about prevention, right? I've always had a passion for prevention. Back when I worked with New York City Office of School Food on curriculum that engaged school children in making healthy eating choices, that's what I was doing. While doing my graduate work at Columbia University, I volunteered with the Healthy Schools, Healthy Families Initiative and advised at a foot charter school as well. Since then, I've done a stint lecturing at the university level on community nutrition. I worked with an innovative online grocery retailer to help make sustainability changes to the food supply in the greater New York area. And somewhere in between, I went to culinary school, I wrote three books and two textbook chapters on brain health nutrition. So the reason I tell you all that is because it's been years in the making that we're in this moment where we're finally realizing the power of food for brain health and prevention is the key. Because what we've seen in long-term studies is that years of eating habits can help or harm the brain. So it really is all about prevention. Which reminds me of this old proverb that I'll paraphrase. Essentially, it's that the best doctor prevents sickness. So said another way, the best doctors are registered dietitian nutritionists. It's an old proverb, so I'm just modernizing it because that gets to the heart of it. So think about dementia. We think of that as a disease of old age, but in a lot of ways, it's a disease of middle age and even the decades prior to that that set up poor lifestyle habits. And today, it's the sixth leading cause of death in the U.S. It affects 50 million people around the world, and there are 10 million new cases a year, leading to physical, psychological, social fallout for individuals, their caregivers, families, society at large. And there are drugs that help with some of the symptoms for a while, but they don't address the underlying issues, and that's why they're not able to treat, halt, or reverse the disease from progressing. But dietary interventions are safe, they support optimal brain health, also mood and mental performance, and the earlier you start, the better. Now, study after study shows that while it's never too late to reap the benefits of eating well, the longer a person is kept up healthy eating, the better their brain health. And this brings me back to kids in school focus. Because brain health is not only for the old, because I would challenge that idea of aging as a destination anyway. Aging is not a destination, it's a continuum. For example, in the early years, the brain quadruples in size in preschool, reaches 90% of its full size around age six, and then it continues to mature throughout the school years into one's 20s. And the brain, like a hungry teen, needs a lot of food, probably seems like more than its fair share of calories and nutrients for its size, but there's a reason for it. One in every five calories we eat needs to go to the brain. The brain has an amazingly high metabolism, and just think about it. Think about the last time you spent a long time concentrating on something. I bet you were exhausted. And that's because the brain burns through a lot of calories and antioxidants. It is specifically hungry for antioxidants. And the minerals and the enzymes that work together to help those antioxidants work. And that is because the brain is especially sensitive to oxidative stress and inflammation. Now the body creates some of its own antioxidants, but the demand in the brain out paces the supply, and that is why food sources are so important. So now I want you to, again, think of those five smooth stones and the power on something that was an afterthought for so long, because that's where we are in the timeline of understanding how to optimize brain health. It was as recent as the fall of 2015, when the culmination of more than a decade's worth of data revealed the power of food in the MIND diet. I want to share that the MIND diet was developed by neuronutrition pioneer and visionary Martha Claire Morris at Rush University. And it's an acronym for Mediterranean DASH Intervention for Neurodegenerative Delay. And the DASH part itself is an acronym for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. 
It's a well-established diet pattern you may have heard of. It's used in clinical settings to reduce high blood pressure. So the MIND diet combines these two, these best researched heart-healthy diets, the Mediterranean and DASH, and then optimizes them for brain health with foods specifically shown in the research to improve cognition. So at this point, it's been nationally recognized for being easy to follow and also one of the best just overall diets. Now, the most exciting thing to me is that the research suggests it has the power to slow down cognitive decline, even when it's only followed about halfway. So, of course, I want you to follow all the guidelines, and the more guidelines you follow, the greater the benefits. But that's pretty great news, so let me just tell you a little bit about it. So in the research, those who followed the diet most closely, to the tune of 60 to 85%, had about half the risk of Alzheimer's, and their minds were functioning as if seven and a half years younger. It's like a facelift for your brain. It's also easier to follow than the Mediterranean or DASH diets. In a head-to-head comparison, all three diets reduced the risk of Alzheimer's when followed strictly with the Mediterranean mind diets cutting risk in about half and DASH just behind at around 40%. But when each diet was followed moderately, the mind diet was the only one to still reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Following about half the recommendations in the mind diet resulted in a reduced risk of 35%. Amazing. So how does that work? The evidence suggests that the special combination of foods in the mind diet works by reducing oxidative stress and inflammation in the body. You'll notice a the theme. But we know that the brain is especially sensitive to this kind of damage. So, what do we eat on the MIND diet? Well, it is a simple list of 10 food types that are flexible enough that you can really make it your own. Now, I'm Korean American, and I know that I have found ways myself to make the MIND diet pattern work in foods that I grew up with. So the first food is vegetables every single day. No surprise. Number two, whole grains every single day. It's a source of vitamin E, And it was actually an ancient food that supported the increasing metabolic demands of a growing brain in early humans. But more recently, has been associated with elementary school students scoring higher in all areas of testing after a whole grain breakfast, including higher scores in reading comprehension, verbal fluency, and math. Three, leafy greens. This is in addition to the vegetables. Leafy greens six times a week. Why not just do it every day? A valued source of flavonoids and folate and vitamin E linked to lower risk of dementia and cognitive decline. Number four, nuts. At least five times a week. That makes it a perfect weekday snack. It's an amazing source of healthy fats and antioxidants that's associated with higher cognitive scores in large-scale studies. Five, beans. At least every other day. It's about four times a week. Plant protein, fiber, B vitamins, more. Large-scale studies in several countries, Sweden, Taiwan, the U.S., show that diet patterns rich in beans are neuroprotective. And then if you combine them with vitamin C in a food like like berries, that improves nutrient absorption more. So combining these foods releases even more of that goodness from beans. So speaking of berries, that's the number six, at least twice a week. It's the only fruit specifically recommended on the MIND diet. It's natural that researchers would have looked at fruits and vegetables and cognition. They're some of the healthiest foods we have. But actually, fruit didn't have an impact overall, but berries did specifically. And I'm not saying to forget all fruit. You should still eat all the fruit you want. But the idea is to make sure that the berries are in the mix specifically for brain health, probably because they're very high in flavonoids, which help reduce oxidative stress and inflammation. Again, that theme. We've seen that in large studies over decades, that berries overall keep the brain about two and a half years younger on average, And blueberry eaters were on the top end of that average with a brain function that was about three and a half years younger. So an extra year of benefit. So it's especially impactful. Seven, poultry, twice a week, lean, not fried, because of its B12. With a deficiency B12, that's been linked to memory loss. Eight, fish, an important source of omega-3s and lean protein, so important for developing brains. The mind diet has it once a week, The American Heart Association says twice a week, so once a week for brain health, but if you can up it, go ahead. It's going to be a good idea. Again, nothing fried. And just a note on mercury, probably not a bad idea to avoid for young children, but adults, the benefits really outweigh the risk. Uh, In a study of older adults, they found that those who ate the most fish, they did indeed have more mercury buildup in their brain. Not a surprise. We know it bioaccumulates in fat but they still had a lower risk of Alzheimer's disease. So again, the benefits outweigh the risk. 
But for kids, if you're looking for something lower in mercury, look at salmon, look at pollock, look at cod and shrimp, sardines. Okay, food number nine, olive oil. More than 200 antioxidants from pressing olives, pressing those olive fruits. It's more like a fruit juice in oil form. It helps proteins and enzymes flush out those harmful plaques in the brain. And in a study of people who included more olive oil in their diet, they scored better on immediate and long-term verbal memory tests. And so keep in mind that the MIND diet doesn't limit total fat, it just recommends replacing solid ones with liquid ones. Mediterranean traditions themselves, they usually include two or three tablespoons, and the MIND diet recommends something more like four tablespoons. Now with wine, there's some nuance. If you don't already drink, there's no reason to start. But if you do, it's at around five ounces a day. So there's good evidence that men and women who drink moderately scored better on a series of questions used to test a range of everyday mental skills, like identifying the correct year, remembering a series of words mentioned earlier, repeating phrases. So keep in mind that even the strictest adherence to the MIND diet followed at only 85%. So what I'm saying is that there's wiggle room. If wine is not your thing, there are non-alcoholic wines that provide some of the same polyphenols, or you can skip it all together and just follow the other guidelines. The bottom line is that the mind diet is not a reason to start drinking if you don't already. But if you do enjoy a glass of wine with dinner, keep it to about five ounces because more isn't going to do any more and it might even be harmful. Speaking of harm, what to limit is just as important. Butter, whole fat cheese, fried food, fast food, red meat, pastries, sweets, they can really undo the benefits otherwise gained. But I want you to know that these are not foods that I want you to eliminate if they're important to you. I would never begrudge a child or an adult for that matter, their birthday cake or a beautiful piece of aged cheese. It's about frequency and making them special foods more than everyday foods because food is so much more than function and I never lose sight of that. So I just want to spend the next few moments talking about what makes the mind diet unique because unsurprisingly, there are a lot of similarities to the DASH and the Mediterranean diets that it's based on. But what makes it unique? One thing is, is a specific recommendation for berries. The only fruit specifically recommended on the MIND diet. And among berries, wild blueberries are in fact unique. Like those five smooth stones, wild blueberries are shaped by nature to perfection. Since they're wild, they're genetically diverse, and there are hundreds of varietals for unique and intense flavors. And if you're familiar with the phrase that if it doesn't kill you, it'll make you stronger, consider that these blueberries have figured out how to not only survive, but thrive in the harsh, cold climate of Maine. And if you think about it, that's why they have such great defenses, aka antioxidants. Those antioxidants that we benefit from, their first purpose is to protect the plant. Wild blueberries are little, but they are mighty. They have twice the antioxidant capacity of cultivated blueberries. And because they're frozen at peak season, that locks in their nutrients and it makes them perfect all year long. Though if you're lucky enough to be in New England in the summer, you might keep an eye out for them in the farm stands. And there's actually more than 20 years of research showing why wild blueberries are a brain food. They've been shown to improve short-term memory and cognitive performance in schools, school-age kids. And another study found that they can boost mood in children and young adults as well. Who doesn't want that? And we've already talked about the brain boosting benefits for adults. But whole foods like wild blueberries are not one trick ponies. Whole foods seldom are, and that's because they benefit the whole body. That makes sense, the body's interconnected. And likewise, whole foods contain an interconnected complex of compounds working together. Some of these things we understand and some we are still studying. But here's what we know about wild blueberries for overall health so far. Vision. A study found that wild blueberries help recover vision after bright light exposure, like nighttime driving. For heart health, study of people eating wild blueberries for six weeks lowered blood pressure and reduced the risk of clogged arteries in people with metabolic syndrome. Type 2 diabetes. A six-week study found that eating wild blueberries every day improved insulin sensitivity in an at-risk group. And what's on the horizon? There is new research that's starting to look at wild blueberries for exercise performance, recovery, wound healing, and prevention of bone loss. It's a lot. Okay, so let's recap. Here are the top 10 takeaways. One, 
The MIND diet is ranked one of the healthiest and simplest diets to follow. 2. The MIND diet blends two of the healthiest diets and enhances it for brain health. 3. The MIND diet cuts the risk of Alzheimer's disease in half and keeps the brain younger. 4. The brain needs food and antioxidants constantly. 5. Berries are the only fruits specifically recommended by the MIND diet. 6. 20 years of research show that wild blueberries improve cognition in young people, older adults, and adults with age-related cognitive decline. 7. Other wild health benefits include heart health, improved insulin sensitivity for type 2 diabetes, positive effects on vision, and more. 8. Wild blueberries have a third more anthocyanins and two times the antioxidant capacity than cultivated. 9. Wild blueberries are great tasting brain food. And 10. Strong brains love wild blueberries. A healthy scoop every day is a simple way to fuel your brain. So next, I'm going to show you that quick recipe I promised at the beginning. Be right back. Okay, this is a super simple brain-boosting breakfast recipe. It serves two. The basic recipe is equal parts milk and frozen wild blueberries, a banana, a handful of nuts, and a splash of vanilla. You just blend it until it reaches your desired consistency, just a minute, maybe less. Divide it into cups and enjoy. Or if you want to make a smoothie bowl, just cut the liquid down. Okay, so today you add your liquid first to help it blend. So I'm going to use a cup and a half of oat milk, but you can use almond milk or whatever your favorite milk is. I'm just going to pour this in. Great, beautiful. And then I'm going to add my frozen blueberries. Also a cup and a half. Remember, one part liquid, one part frozen wild blueberries. Get them in there. Perfect. Beautiful. Those are gorgeous. Okay. I'm going to add a quarter of nuts. You can have your kids help you choose which one if you want. I'm going to go with walnuts for tonight, today. And then I'm going to slice up a banana. So this is another area that you can get your kids involved, teach them some safe knife skills. Open the banana like a normal person would, not like I just did. Oops. That's okay. And then you can have them just slice. Or, you know, if they're a little too young to use any kind of knife, you can have them uh, just break them apart with their hands. That's fun too. So just add that right in. Don't forget that little guy. Okay. And then I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. I honestly don't ever measure this at home, but um, here I have. So I'm just going to add that in. I usually just add a splash and it's fine. Okay. That is it. And then I'm just going to put this on here. All right. So that's really it. You saw it came together really quickly. Ooh, nice little frost there from the blueberries. And now I want to taste this. So I'm just going to we'll see how nicely it pours. It's got that gorgeous color. Okay. Nice and cold from the frozen blueberries. Mmm. So refreshing. This is going to be a really family-friendly recipe. Really easy to grab on the go, too, if that's something that you need to do. Super simple. Um, I actually make a lot of these in smoothie packs. Um, get them ready to go. Um, and then sometimes I'll add some other things in. So here I have about a cup of wild greens. These are um, pea shoots. They are really mild, even a little bit sweet, I dare say, and uh, won't, you know, bother the flavor of your smoothie too much. So these are great to add in. Um, I've got some, uh, just one scoop of plant-based protein powder. Sometimes I'll add this in, and this is vanilla flavored too. So um, it will complement that vanilla flavor. And then the, um, oh, the vanilla. I use baking vanilla because it's lower in alcohol content. So that's just something you might want to look into. 
And then sometimes I'll add a little bit of cinnamon, um, which goes really well flavor profile wise with the blueberries and they bring something nice out in each other. And the same goes with nutmeg. And nutmeg, you can just use a zester. This one has a little bit already zested off of it and just zest that right in over the top um, for a little added extra nuttiness is really nice. And then what I actually do each morning is I add about uh, an inch or so of fresh ginger because it gives it a really powerful zing that I love in the morning. It might be a little bit of a strong flavor for kids. So it depends where they are in terms of their flavor palate development. But um, if they want to try it and they're okay with it, then uh, this is also something that they can help make. So, or prep rather. So all they need is, I have a little spoon, kid size spoon. If you're doing it, you can also use the adult size spoon. And you just apply a little bit of pressure and the ginger skin, you'll see, will come right off. Ooh, splash a little bit in my face. Um, and that's the, the only sane way to peel ginger, really. So that's what you do for that. Um, and then you just add it to your smoothie, just a little bit, and it adds a beautiful zing. And a great way to expand the palate for the kids, too, when they're ready. So I really love making smoothie bowls. It just, it makes it more fun to put it in a bowl and to add some toppings. Plus it adds some textural interest with what you have on top. So all that I did was I cut the liquid in half. Um, and for this, I did use a frozen banana um, just to make sure that I had that, that texture uh, that I wanted. And then I'm gonna just have some fun. So if you want, you can cut open some pistachios. You don't have to, um, but I really like how it, it makes a nice pop of green. So I'm just gonna add those here. And this is really great. You can just keep some, put out an array of toppings and just let your kids have a little fun making their own. I've got some coconut chips here to add some contrast of a different color here. Just a few. I've got some chia seeds. These are so good for you. And also they're impossible to clean, so it's great to add them afterwards. I'm just gonna add a little stripe here. And this beautiful, Beautiful purple color from the blueberries is coming through. That's just gorgeous. Okay. And actually, I'm going to add some hemp hearts for some more healthy fats and a beautiful color contrast there. And just for fun, I'm going to add in some other nuts. Why not? Just put some almonds in there. Boop. Walnut pieces are big, so I'm just going to break those up a little bit. Okay. Beautiful smoothie bowl. And really fun to eat. Just take a little bite. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Almost forgot. These are my smoothie packs, so this is what I do. I prep them all in advance. I toss them in the freezer, everything all together, and then they're ready to go any morning. So I know it's a little hard to see, but it might actually have some greens in there and nuts. And like this one's got pistachios, this one's got almonds. So I, I kind of mix it up too. Um, I've got my ginger in there because I really love that. You can do whatever you want. This is a great activity for the kids. So you can make them all at once together, set aside some time, you know, over the weekend. And then you have them ready to go. So thank you again for tuning in. I hope you feel armed and inspired to boost brain health for yourself and your kiddos through simple, powerful foods that, like those five smooth stones, have been perfected by nature to defend you. I'd love to keep the conversation going. Let me know what you think of the smoothie. Ask me any other questions. I'm at Mind Diet Meals on Instagram or rd at minddietmeals.com. And for more Wild Blueberry inspiration, check them out on Instagram at Wild Blueberries or online at their website at wildblueberries.com. So thank you. Stay safe. Be well. And cheers.